I was asked to discuss today three abstracts at, uh, at San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium and I deal with the session on DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ. And the first two abstracts deal with um, molecular biomarkers and their potential role in um, helping us manage DCIS. And the third one deals with an online decision support tool uh, to help better inform women uh, diagnosed with DCIS on their risks and their treatment options. Uh, and so the, uh, these three abstracts are really quite complementary um, because there's a challenge um, for those of us who treat individuals with DCIS on how to optimally treat uh, the disease because uh, the most women with DCIS will not die of breast cancer. Most will not even develop invasive breast cancer, but some will. And it's been a challenge over the past few decades to try and really identify, better identify women at risk of developing invasive breast cancer so we can treat those subset of women without over-treating the majority of women who will not develop invasive breast cancer or die of the disease. And so in the past few years, there have been a number of molecular um, assays, what we call expression assays, that have been evaluated in DCIS. One is called the 12-gene oncotype DCIS score. The other one is called the decision score. Um, and, and then more recently, the second abstract deals with the 21-gene recurrence score, which is used for women with early invasive disease. And so the first abstract, um, which is based on the decision score, um, really evaluated whether the, this molecular assay can um, identify women who we would otherwise think have low risk DCIS based on their tumor size and grade, if it can identify subgroup of women who have a high molecular score, um, and whether those women um, had uh, a higher risk of recurrence. And indeed, that's what the abstract showed, that they um, identified women from Sweden and the US who had what we would think otherwise as having low risk DCIS, small tumor size, non-high grade. They measured the decision score. And interestingly, about half of the women had a high decision score. And those women who had a high decision score had a much higher probability of developing invasive breast cancer compared to those with a low decision score. And so, and a, and a greater benefit to radiation treatment. The second abstract looked at a different biomarker assay. It looked at the 21 gene recurrence score, which we know is, uh, has substantial prognostic utility um, in invasive disease. And this study looked to see, well, can it help better predict the risk of recurrence for women with DCIS? And it used statistical predictive modeling, and it showed, yes, it can, that this 21 gene assay may also have a role in helping clinicians identify women at high risk of recurrence with DCIS from those at low risk. So the two abstracts together, in addition to other work that's being published, start to um, provide a light that the genomic era may now be starting into DCIS. And by integrating genomic biomarker assays, we really are beginning to hopefully better identify the high-risk women who need treatment from the low-risk women who we can safely de-escalate treatment on. So really, those two abstracts deal with, with that, which is very exciting for the future. More work is needed, but we're starting to get there. The third abstract, um, is is uh, fantastic in that it is a it, it really illustrates or speaks to an online tool because of all the work that we do in the scientific and in the clinical community that can only improve the treatment decision making the quality of life and the outcome of of the individuals if they understand if that information is relayed to them and so the third one deals with an online tool that helps provide an educational education to individuals on what is DCIS, what truly is the risk of recurrence, what are the treatment options, what are the expected outcomes of those options to help inform and, you know, so to speak, empower individuals to make decisions. Because the, right, the, 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 the one treatment will not be the same. The patient preferences, patient values are differ. And so the online tool, this one 
or others like it are going to be key to relaying the advances of, of medicine to at the individual level so that women and clinicians can kind of integrate that into individualized decision making. So that really is a nutshell um, um, overview of the three abstracts that I've been asked to discuss.